Joe Dekto's part uh, was a LARP about a wedding between a Palestinian woman, Hulud, and the Norwegian man, Haral. And it was played in big site outside of Ramallah uh, in August 2012. We were a huge organizing group, 11 people, uh, a lot of us from the Norwegian organization Fantasifubinde, and the others from the Palestinian organization, the Peace and Free Freedom Youth Forum. Uh, the LARP was played over a weekend. Uh, we had 12 hours of workshop uh, and then 36 hours of play. <coughs> We had a group of participants that came from uh, both Palestine and the Nordic countries. There were 35 in total, uh, split on the middle. And they all played the family and friends of the bride and the groom. The LARP had two goals with it, or you could say the LARP project had two goals. One was to, for us to share LARP making skills with PFF so that they would be able to go on to organize their own LARPs. So this picture is from one of our uh, workshops where we sort of fleshed out all the characters, who are the people who will be in this LARP. The other goal was for cultural exchange between Palestine and Nordica. Uh, for this reason, we chose to make the LARP about a wedding uh, because this gives us many, re many possibilities to talk about uh, social and uh, political and economic and cultural um, aspects of both communities. And this cultural exchange and sometimes cultural collision was made really interesting by the participants actually coming from different cultures. In many other LARPs you play, you come from different cultures, but you all share the same set of values, more or less. But here was different. The playing style was semi-realistic, which means that like everything that was part of the wedding and all the characters were realistic people, but the amount of them together uh, was maybe not that realistic. Um, it, we could say that we used the, com co the comic potential in real life, uh, but the LARP is not a comedy still. Uh, so what happened in this LARP? The first day the guests arrived and they got to know each other a little bit. Um, the men went to the hammam, the Turkish bath, while the women prepared the henna party. So they're making the henna. What is the henna party? The henna party is uh, a party where the bride and the groom get their hands uh, painted with henna. Uh, and while at the same time the women dance and sing and have a good time. At the same time as this was going on, the groom was having his bachelor party and the two parties sort of merged in the end. Then the next day, the women went off to the hammam while uh, the men were having the groom shower. And the groom shower is a quite silly thing where the Groom is being prepared for the, the wedding by being showered with a garden hose and being, um, having his uh, skin uh, shaved with uh, shaving foam in his shoe and a lot of silly things. Uh, so they were doing that. And then in the afternoon, it was time for the wedding itself. A lot of singing and dancing, a lot of nice stuff, and the LARP ended when the party was at its best and all the conflicts were going all around and things were going on. Um, during all these events that we had planned, um, the LARP centered around uh, conflicts, personal conflicts, uh, people getting to know each other and misunderstandings and bondings and all these things. So it was really nice. Um, but uh, we had a lot of new players in this game both Nordic and Palestinian. So what did we do to make them able to play this LARP? Uh, in the first place, before the LARP, we hardly required anything of them. They had to uh, read the character and they had to find a costume. And then they had to get to be site. Uh, but we facilitated a 12 hour workshop. And in the workshop, we did a lot of different things. We uh, had 
We played out scenes. We had a guided meditation, as they're doing here, um, hot seat questioning. Uh, we also played out the scenes from um, the story of Harald and Hulund, from they got engaged to they married. So we played it out like people sitting here, and then some people were playing on the stage. Um, and then they went back, and then we gave a new scene, and other people would come up and play their part of the story. So everybody got to be in at least one scene. Uh, some were in many. We also did one thing that was that we let the players try out um, their characters. So we had a test run where they were playing just one hour during the workshop to try to see how does this character work. And then they could adjust it based on, oh, that wasn't that playable. So then they could change things around their character before the LARP itself. Um, I will now look at some of the faders from the mixing desk of LARP to see how we chose to, to set them in this game. The first one is the character creation responsibility. As we had so many newcomers, uh, we wanted to give them good characters to work with. We also figured that since the point was a cultural exchange, writing the characters gave us possibility to put in many different things and to get the sort of um, specter of the society that we want. <coughs> uh, <clears throat> so the organizers wrote all the characters. We chose to have a high level of transparency. And this is both because we generally believe that that makes for better LARPs, uh, but also because it would strengthen the cultural exchange, because knowing all the different backstories made you know more about the society as well. We used a few meta techniques, um, but they were quite discreet in the game. We had a black box where you go to to play scenes. Uh, you didn't play scenes like in the game, you, you go, went to the black box and did it there. Uh, the other thing we did was that we had, during the <coughs> wedding ceremony, people got to light candles and speak what the characters were thinking and feeling in that moment. Um, we also had um, a kissing mechanic. Um, <coughs> Since in the Nordic countries, you might have the people kiss for real if they had talked to the play people they were played with. Uh, but we felt that that might pressure both Nordic players and Palestinian players too much. But then again, we had created a story where you would have several scenes that could be sealed with a kiss. So we wanted the mechanic for this to make people able to pretend. No, to pretend. So we did this by having people have their hands meet in front of their face. So this is the wedding kiss, sort of. Um, the, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is loyalty to setting, because uh, I will talk more about this tomorrow. It's about playability and plausibility. What is it plausible for a character to do in this game? Uh, and we chose to go with high plausibility, because we wanted to show uh, a, uh, a realistic Palestine. Do I have time to give an example? Yeah. Um, we have one example is that in the Palestinian society, maybe not so many families would actually let their daughters marry a foreigner, a non-Muslim foreigner, because a wedding is a family matter, whereas in Nor uh, the Nordic countries, it's up to you uh, who you want to marry. It's up to the family. The, the bride and groom can say no, but so can the family. So uh, we needed to find a family that would actually let their, their daughter marry a foreigner. So we chose to give the father um, a Marxist background, non-Muslim, whereas the mother was a bit more conservative, or her family was a bit more conservative. And at the same time, uh, the sister was married to a guy who was very conservative. So in this way, we managed to show that um, it is possible, but it's not without controversy. Okay, I just want to show this slide. If you want to learn more, there are 
places to see. It's a video made by Petir, and there are some articles. And there are also plenty of both organizers and players here. So you can ask uh, if you want to talk more about it. Okay, thank you.